In today's video, we have a really special topic. We will explore a question that many SFF PC enthusiasts have been asking. Whether a powerful low-profile GPU like the RTX 5060 can be installed in an old, inexpensive office PC. The main concern is overheating. Can we overcome this challenge? I believe the main reason people buy an RTX 5060 low-profile card is that they want to transform their old PC into a gaming machine without spending on a new CPU, RAM, or motherboard. Simply install a powerful low-profile card in a $100 PC rather than building a new one that could cost over $1,000. However, upgrading an OEM SFF Office PC with a high-power consumption graphics card is not easy. SFF Office PCs typically lack sufficient ventilation for a high-power GPU and do not include dedicated case fans. Moreover, most of these PCs come with very small PSUs, such as 180 watts or 210 watts. In this video, I will address all these challenges and demonstrate that you can upgrade an old SFF PC with an RTX 5060 low profile card, proving that the heat issue lies with your PC rather than the GPU. Here I have an FSP 500 watt PSU for Lenovo. The PSU comes with two 8-pin PCIe power cables for the GPU. Alternatively, you can use a TFX or Flex PSU along with a 24-pin to 10-pin cable adapter designed for Lenovo. Most Lenovo or HP Elite Desk SFF PCs feature a large drive bay that occupies the space needed for GPU installation, so I cut off a small part of it to create room for the GPU. Now let's install some RAM. I installed 16 gigabytes using two 8 gigabyte DDR, four 3,200 mega transfers per second modules. Next, let's install an M.2 SSD. Now let's upgrade the PSU. The stock PSU is rated at 210 watt and only includes a 10-pin motherboard power connector and a 4-pin CPU power connector. For a 500 watt power supply unit, we have a 10-pin motherboard power connector, two 8-pin PCIe power connectors, and two 4-pin CPU power connectors. Now let's connect the 10-pin power cable to the 10-pin power connector on the motherboard. And now, let's connect the 4-pin CPU power cable to the 4-pin CPU power connector on the motherboard. Here, I have a Gigabyte RTX 5060 low-profile graphics card. This GPU is the same size as the Gigabyte RTX 4060 low-profile model, but it is a 145-watt card, which means it consumes significantly more power and can generate more heat than the RTX 4060. Also, this GPU requires one 8-pin PCIe power cable. So now let's connect the 8-pin PCIe power cable to the PCIe 8-pin power connector on the GPU. If we take a close look at both the GPU and the PC chassis, you'll notice that the GPU still seems too small. In fact, with a PC of this size, you could install a full-size GPU. It's all about the design, right? Now let's take a look at the side panel. I believe that if we close the side panel while gaming with an RTX 5060, the GPU will throttle very quickly. We need to address this issue. Here I designed a 3D model for a ventilation side panel for the Lenovo M910S. The side panel can be securely attached to the case using the original two thumb screws, and it features hooks to lock it in place at the front, just like the original design. The 3D model's dimensions are 257.5 millimeters by 341 millimeters. So you might need a printer with a build volume of at least 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters to print it. It seems that the ventilation holes are a bit large, so feel free to add a dust filter. However, we keep our PC inside the house, 
so it isn't exposed to a high dust environment. This 3D model file is also compatible with the Lenovo M920S. The 3D printed side panel is three millimeters thick, ensuring that it remains stable enough to maintain its shape. Additionally, it features three hooks that securely attach the side panel to the chassis. Now, let's install the 3D printed side panel on the PC case. Just to verify the finish and accuracy, it grips tightly and securely in place. Let's test it several times. Now, let's secure the 3D printed panel to the chassis using two thumb screws. Now that my project is complete, you can preview it. Now, let's check the GPU installation using GPU-Z. Here, we have an NVIDIA RTX 5060, featuring eight gigabytes of GDDR7 installed in this PC. The GPU is operating at PCIe X8 Gen 3, even though it natively supports PCIe X8 Gen 5. You can observe its thermal performance while it is running. Now let's check the GPU's total power draw and temperature under full load using Fermart. With the 3D printed ventilation side panel, the Gigabyte RTX 5060 low profile is running in excellent condition. The GPU total power draw reach up to 150 watts, which mean no throttle at all, yet its maximum temperature is only 82 degrees Celsius, leaving ample headroom before reaching the T-junction temperature. It might seem high, but keep in mind that this is a 145 watt GPU with a much smaller fan and heat sink compared to other RTX 5060 models. So achieving this temperature represents an optimal setup. Now, let's examine the GPU's thermal performance during gaming. For testing, I used Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p with ultra graphics settings and frame generation enabled. As you can see, the frame rate is exceptionally high, reaching up to 300 frames per second. In this video, we'll evaluate the thermal performance of a high-power, low-profile GPU installed in an SFF office PC to determine whether it's truly feasible to use these GPUs in such systems. I know that this setup could potentially create a significant CPU bottleneck, but that's not our focus for today's video. Instead, we're concentrating on how to resolve overheating issues when installing high-power, low-profile GPUs, like the RTX 4060 Low Profile or RTX 5060 Low Profile. If my experiment proves successful, it could be a good example for everyone to upgrade a newer PCs with these newer GPUs, providing a great performance boost without the cost of buying a pre-built system. Now, let's test again with frame generation turned off, with it disabled and using the same graphics preset settings the game performance reaches around 90 frames per second. The GPU temperature remains below 80 degrees Celsius during gaming. The GPU power consumption rises to up to 150 watts, and the GPU fan spins at around 70% of its capacity. In conclusion, the custom-designed 3D printed ventilation side panel has proven to be a game changer for this compact office PC setup. By enhancing the airflow within the chassis, this modification ensures that even a high-power, low-profile GPU like the Gigabyte RTX 5060 can operate under demanding conditions without overheating. During my tests, whether running Cyberpunk 2077 at ultra settings with frame generation enabled or disabled, the GPU maintained safe temperatures below 80 degrees Celsius. This clearly demonstrates that even in small form factor systems, smart modifications like a 3D printed ventilation panel can effectively manage thermal loads 
and pave the way for upgrades that were previously thought impractical. This project not only validates the thermal benefits of improved ventilation, but also serves as a practical example for people considering similar upgrades. It shows that with a bit of creativity and precise design, you can repurpose older or more compact systems to accommodate modern, powerful components, thereby extending their lifespan and enhancing overall performance. 